What's the best 140mm fan you can buy for your PC today? Which 140mm fan should you buy as a case fan, as a heatsink fan, or as a radiator fan? These are the questions this video aims to answer. I've taken 10 of the best and newest 140mm fans on the market right now, analyzed and tested them against each other, and then come to a conclusion on which fans are the best you can buy right now. If you just want to know what fans are the best and buy them, check the links in the description. And if you'd like to skip through this video to any section, check the timestamps at the bottom of the description. I do definitely recommend watching this whole video though, so you can see all the pros and cons of each fan, and make the right fan choice for your system. Now let's introduce all 10 of today's contestants. The NFA14 PWM Chromax Black Swap by Noctua, the Silent Wings 3 140mm PWM High Speed by Be Quiet, the ML140 Pro by Corsair, the P14 PWM by Arctic, the Air P140 by NZXT, the NBE Loop B14PS by Black Noise, the Kaze Flex 140 Square by Scythe, the Dynamic X2 GP14 PWM by Fractal Design, the PHF140 MP by Fantex, and the TY147A SQ by Thermalright. Don't worry if your favorite fan wasn't included, this will be a series of videos, so leave a comment with whatever fan you'd like to be tested and I'll try to include it in the next video, and be sure you're subscribed to see all my latest videos coming up. So without further ado, let's start analyzing and testing these fans to see which ones are the best. The first thing we'll be looking at is the price of these fans. Here are the normal US Amazon prices, rounded to the nearest dollar. We can see there's quite a large price difference between some of these fans. The clear winner is the P14, coming in at only $10, one third of the price of the most expensive fans here. Then the PHF140 MP and Kaze Flex are both reasonably priced as well. The Air P140, TY147A, and Dynamic X2 come in around the middle of the pack, around $20. Breaking the $20 price point, we see the Silent Wings 3 and the NFA14 near the most expensive. And hitting the most expensive at $30 each, we have the NBE Loop and the ML140. The question always is, are the most expensive ones actually worth it? We'll see if their prices are justified as we further analyze and test these fans. Now let's look at the appearance of these fans. I've ranked them here according to my own personal preference, although truthfully most of these fans look great and only a few at the bottom I have an issue with. Appearance is very subjective, everyone is going to like different looks, and which ones look best is going to depend a lot on the color scheme of your build. I'll give you a good look at them so you can make your own decision as well. First, my favorite looking fan of the bunch is the Silent Wings 3. It just has a really interesting, aggressive look with the ribbed fan blades, shiny black plastic, and orange accent colors on the front and back middle. The orange in the middle also looks quite nice when it's spinning. My next favorite is the ML140. It's made of very solid black plastic with some gray accents in the corner, some interesting patterns on its sides, and a classy Corsair sales logo in the middle. The logo looks great when it's spinning too. My third favorite is the P14 PWM. This fan is quite lightweight and looks like it's made out of cheap plastic, but I just love the minimalistic look. The fan blades have a very interesting sharp design, and the patterns in the corner are nice too. The Arctic logo in the middle looks great when still or spinning. Next is the Kaze Flex. This fan has a really unique design, with the gray and black color scheme and the cool scythe logo in the middle. The sides are relatively plain, with some indents, and it has rubber on the corners. Overall quite nice looking, but the gray can conflict a bit with the color scheme of some builds. Now hitting the middle of the pack in 5th place is the NBE Loop B14PS. This fan actually comes in black as well, and I probably prefer the black color, but the white looks quite nice too, and would go well in more mixed or white based builds. It has a cool shiny coating on its fan blades that looks really amazing when the light catches it. Next is the TY147A. This fan looks a bit plain, but still pretty nice looking overall, with the black and white theme and an interesting green accent in the middle. The blue, green, and yellow cords are a nice touch as well. Next is the PHF140 MP. This is another black and white fan, and looks pretty classy overall, but has no accent colors whatsoever, making it a bit boring. It also comes in black, which again I probably prefer, but the white can go well with many builds. The shiny Fantex logo on the back does look pretty nice. 
And finally, the last of the black and white fans, the Dynamic X2. Again, this one also comes in black if you'd prefer to go that route. This fan just looks very plain and cheap overall. It's not bad looking, but it just doesn't have anything interesting or eye-catching about it. And you can tell the materials used were low budget. And now the Air P140 coming near the end of my list. This fan just has a color that I don't like too much, which is purple. If you are a fan of purple, you may like it a lot, but it's not my cup of tea. It's also pretty hard to match purple with your color scheme, unless you're going for an all NZXT build. It does look pretty decent overall other than the purple. And finally, in dead last, is the NFA-14. The original version of the NFA-14 was brown, which a lot of people didn't like, so Noctua made this black version. However, there are still a lot of issues with its appearance, such as these white characters on the side of the fan, and these strangely mismatched rubber corners that you can swap out, but Noctua only provided four of each color, so you can't even match the colors on both sides. Very strange decision by Noctua, but hopefully they will learn how to make their fans look better in the future. Now I'm almost ready to show you the performance tests, but first I'm going to give a quick overview of my performance test procedure. This is going to get a bit technical, so if you don't care about all the ins and outs of the test procedure, feel free to skip to the performance section using the pinned comment below. I tested all of these fans in three different scenarios, as a case fan, as a heatsink fan, and as a radiator fan. For the case test, I installed the fans in the back of the case as an exhaust fan. The case, by the way, is a fractal design, Define S2, and for all these tests, the only fans installed are the ones being tested. For the heatsink test, I installed the fans in the middle of a Noctua NHD15 heatsink. For the radiator test, I installed the fans on an NZXT Kraken X42. Oops, I mean Kraken X42 radiator. Then for each scenario, I tested each fan at five different equally distributed fan speed levels, from lowest to highest. For example, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and 100%. This way we can see how the fan performs across the full range of its capability. For each fan speed level, I recorded the lowest noise level it produced after two minutes, and I placed the test system in a quiet closet to keep outside noise interference to a minimum. For the temperature test, I tested each fan speed level for five minutes under a CPU heat load of 95 watts for heat sink and radiator tests, and 65 watts for the case test, because the CPU would overheat if I used a higher wattage for that test. I used BIOS power limits and Prime95 to lock in the exact wattage output I want for the CPU. The CPU I'm using is a 9700K, and the motherboard is an ASUS Maximus 11 Hero. I then take those temperature and noise readings and graph the results, which lets us see exactly how the fan performs over its full capability compared to other fans. These graphs may look a bit complicated at first, but they're easy to understand once you get the golden rule. Lower is better. We want lower temps and lower noise, so the lines that are closest to this lower left corner are the best. This is the graph for case performance. I've also ranked each fan here according to its overall performance. We can see the P14 in white comes in first overall, with a really excellent noise temperature curve, achieving the lowest temperatures at all the lowest noise levels, and with nearly the lowest temperatures period at its highest speeds. Then the Kaze Flex and the ML140 come in second. The Kaze Flex in red has excellent mid-range performance, but doesn't have much high-end range, while the ML140 in light blue has great low speed and high speed performance, and is actually able to achieve one of the lowest temperatures of all of them at its highest speeds, but at the cost of very high noise levels. The TY147A, NBE Loop, and Dynamic X2 all come in around the middle of the pack, performing very similar to each other, with the TY147A having a bit less range than the others, but remaining quiet. The Air P140 in dark red comes in fourth, near the end of the pack, with significantly higher temperatures than the rest at most noise levels, except at its highest speeds, where it's actually able to get the lowest temperatures out of all of them, but at the cost of incredibly high noise levels, so not worth it unless you don't mind your computer sounding like a jet engine. The Silent Wings 3 in orange comes in fifth, and just has a pretty poor noise temperature curve overall, similar to the NFA14 in black in sixth, which performs the same, but with a bit more noise at low speeds. Then in dead last is the PHF140 in pink, which just gets hotter than all the rest of them at nearly all noise levels. Now let's see how these fans perform on a CPU cooler heatsink. We can see the P14 in white here is again the overall winner. It just has the best temperatures at almost all noise levels. 
Next, the Kaze Flex in red and the NFA14 in black have very respectable performance, coming in second place, with the Kaze Flex actually having the lowest noise levels overall, while the NFA14 has some more high-end range to drop temperatures a bit further at the cost of more noise. Then the ML140 in light blue and the TY147A in green coming around the middle of the pack with the ML140 actually having one of the lowest temperatures at its highest speeds, but at the cost of extremely high noise levels. The Dynamic X2 in yellow performs similarly, but a bit worse overall. The Air P140 in dark red has poor performance overall, but is actually able to achieve the lowest temperatures of all of these at its highest speeds but only with extremely high noise levels, so not worth it at all, especially considering the P14 gets almost the same temperature with much lower noise. The PHF140 MP in pink comes near the end of the pack, with pretty poor temperatures overall, then the Silent Wings 3 in orange, and the NBE loop in blue end up in second to last and last place respectively. Now let's see how these fans perform on a CPU liquid cooler radiator. We can see this competition is much closer, with many of the fans performing very similar to each other. There's a three-way tie for first place, with the P14 in white having excellent temperatures, but can't get quite as quiet at low speeds, and the Kaze Flex in red having really excellent temperatures too, but can't get quite as cool at its high speeds, and the TY147A in green with just a really balanced profile overall, and excellent low temperatures especially at low speeds. Then the NBE loop in blue and the Dynamic X2 in yellow come tied for second place with good performance overall. The NFA14 in black comes in third place with okay performance, but it gets very hot at low speeds. The ML140 in light blue comes in fourth place with really excellent low speed performance, but gets hotter than the rest at middle fan speeds and gets extremely loud at its highest speeds. It is able to achieve the lowest temperatures at those high speeds, but at the cost of incredibly high noise levels. Then the PHF140 MP in pink and the Air P140 in dark red come in near last in fifth place with just pretty poor performance overall. And finally, the Silent Wings 3 in orange comes in last place, with bad performance, especially at low speeds, where it gets hotter and louder than all the rest. Now we're almost to the conclusion of this video, but let's look at one more aspect of these fans. Their warranty. Fans are often the only moving parts in modern PCs, so they are more liable to break down than other parts. And it's nice to have a good warranty in case that happens. Warranty also generally tells you how long the manufacturer expects their product to last. We can see the P14 comes in an easy first place here with a ridiculous 10 year warranty. This will last you through many builds, so these fans might as well last forever. The NFA14 and the NBE loop both come in at a very respectable 6 years, with the PHF140 MP and the ML140 right behind them with also a very good 5 years. Then the Silent Wings 3 comes in at 3 years, which is not bad, but could definitely be a bit higher for peace of mind. Lastly, the Kaze Flex, Air P140, TY147A, and Dynamic X2 all coming in at 2 years, which is a bit short and does make you question their longevity a bit. So now we've looked at all the important aspects of these fans. Price, appearance, performance, and warranty. And it's time to come to the ultimate conclusion. Which of these fans are actually worth buying? Which ones are the best? In my previous videos, I would always recommend a few different products that were good at different things, but the conclusion for this video is unprecedented. There is one product that completely dominates the others, and I see no reason to recommend anything over it in any category. This one product is not only the best budget fan for all scenarios, it's also the best fan period. I've never seen a product that was the cheapest and the best too, so this is pretty incredible. It's the best case fan, the best heatsink fan, and the best radiator fan. The best 140mm fan for everything is the P14 PWM by Arctic. The P14 absolutely destroyed the competition in nearly every way. It's the cheapest, the best performing in all scenarios, one of the best looking, and has the longest warranty. There are a couple fans that equal its radiator performance, but they were more expensive and had more issues overall, so the P14 is still my top pick for radiators, cases, and heat sinks. You really don't need to buy any fan other than this one, which is quite nice because you can swap it out to different positions as you change and upgrade your system. 
Arctic could easily sell the P14 for twice the price, but please don't tell them that, because we like our products cheap and amazing. To make up for it, we can just buy twice as many of them. You can easily outfit your whole system with these fans, for much cheaper than the others, and you'll get the absolute best performance out of it, which is pretty crazy. Needless to say, the P14 is going to win my highly recommended award, and if I had some kind of blowout award, I'd give it that too. I've never seen one product so absolutely dominate the competition, so the P14 is the easiest recommendation I've ever made. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, and hit subscribe to see more computer part reviews coming soon. If you really want to help out, hit the share button to share this video with others on places like Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, forums, and other social media. I'm a small YouTuber, so every share helps a lot. I hope this video helped you make better consumer decisions. See you next time.